Welcome to Nacio TV, the Sake News Channel. The program. When, when is it over? Well, you know, it's an open enrollment program. So whenever they finish, they, some more people come in. Good. And I'm um, pretty sure you want to go to college after it? Or? What's, what's, what's the plan? Well, two of them are already going to well, college. I'm already in school. You're already in school? Yeah. BCCC? Or? Um, yeah, someone. I'm in college, campus. too. Are you in college? Which, uh, I got a bird. Bird in college? I'm in college. Cool. Cool. How about the others? Planning to attend? Yes, they are. <laughs> She's got a Harvard. She's in the <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. I went to King College, well, King University now. Uh, back then. In '88, I graduated. It's a couple of years ago. Not, not, not long ago. Mm -hmm. What was your major? Uh, pre med. Pre med. The pre med, a uh, double major, pre med and uh, medical technology. Oh, wow. Because, um, um, as you know, you got to get to medical school. So what happens is uh, you usually do a double major, just in case you don't get in the first year, which happened to me. Um, so I did uh, medical technology. Worked for a year in Johnson and Johnson. So I took the MCATs and I didn't do that, that good. The MCATs is like the SATs for uh, medical school. Um, so uh, the verbal part, there's a verbal part in which they give you um, a couple of essays and you gotta answer questions and uh, I think it's like a 500 word essays. Um, there's like 10 or 11 of them. You gotta do it like in an hour. And I'm not a good reader. So uh, I did horrible. I got like a three out of 15. <laughs> but I didn't prep either. So that was another um, a part of that uh, parents don't realize. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, I came from the Dominican Republic. I don't know how many of you were born here or came from another country. But, um, uh, my mother finished a fifth grade education in the Dominican Republic. I came when I was 12. So she didn't know much about schooling. She just uh, infused us the desire to go to college. So um, we didn't know much about the system here. We, uh, I took the SATs and I didn't even know what, what was that all about. My guy, I told my cat, my guy is cancer, I want to go to college. And she said, oh, you know, you need to take the SATs. I said, sure, you know, I'll, I'll take it. It's a, uh, they offer it on a, on a Saturday. So I came in and, and took it. I did great on the SATs, I got like 900 or something. Um, so I uh, applied to, I didn't know what, what, what colleges to go, so I applied to Sidney Hall, Rutgers, and, and Kane College. And um, most of my friends were going to Kane College. So I figured, you know what, let me just go to Kane College because all my friends are going there. There was like 12 of us. So we went to Kane College, Kane University now. And uh, guess what? Guess how many, how many of my friends graduated with me? So. One. <laughs> I saw them all dropping out because of financial problems and you know, family issues. So uh, uh, most of them uh, dropped out, and uh, only a friend of mine graduated. He's a lawyer in Rhode Island right now. But um, but it's a, you know it's a great experience. So it's a lot of work. Like I said, if you don't have the support, you know, especially at home, um, to guide you through the process. Um, I took the MCAT uh, again. Uh, I had to learn everything by myself. My mother just said, "You know, you, to, you gotta go to college to better your life," and, and I did. You know, my mom raised us, uh, working on a minimum wage uh, salary. I think she was making like three bucks an hour in a factory. And she used to walk from Oak Street to Eighth Street back in the day. So I imagine. I don't know if you're familiar with the same Oak Street at St. Mary's Hospital um, to Eighth Street like two miles every day you know, come, come and go and then on top of that she used to get home and cook for us so imagine you know no McDonald's or anything was rice and beans she used to come in and cook for us so I, I respect my mother a lot and uh, she was a great role model for me I've seen her sacrificing herself and that's what you know, that's what we have to do we have to burn ourselves because they took a big risk coming to this country to better their, their, their future, of not only them, but you know, us, to become better, better individuals. So don't, don't, um, don't waste time. Don't waste your time because uh, time flies. In a blink of an eye, uh, 
now you're, you know, 20, 15. I remember graduating college, I said, uh, high school, and I said to myself, well, you know, 30 is going to be a, it's a long time from, from now, so that's not going to worry about. I blink of an eye, it was like, I'm, I'm 30 or whatever. So time flies, and it flies. It goes by either you're working or sitting down on a, on a chair or, or walking. It goes by, time goes by. So just make, make, um, make the best out of it. And remember, you don't get it back. You know, it's not like you go to Dunkin' Donuts and buy a, com a coffee. You can't go to a place and say, give me five minutes, and I'll pay a million dollars and give me a year. So that's why uh, it's important that you don't waste it. And you always keep on you know, moving forward. Follow your dreams. Uh, I, I, usually, I usually tell everybody about my experiences about following friends. You know, like sometimes you want to follow your friends and you know, have a hangout. But um, you know, most of the times uh, you know, they, they usually leave you hanging or, or they're not good role models for, for you to follow. And it can get you into trouble. Um, I learned that the hard way. Um, I was hanging out with a friend of mine. Um, he was in high school. And um, you know, he was a nice kid. I mean, he wasn't in any trouble, but he was hard-headed. He was always fighting. So we went to the movies, and um, I remember the movie, I think it was like Karate Kid, the first Karate Kid, not the uh, Will Smith uh, son, the first Karate Kid. So we're sitting there, and um, there's some guy in the back uh, started arguing and saying things. He throws a punch, and I, but I didn't see none of this. I just felt something that hit my neck. I'm like, what the hell happened? So I stand up and I look back. And he goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I, I try to hit your friend here." He's like, "Yeah, but you hit me." <laughs> so um, everything that's going away uh, outside, they fought and everything. But um, you know, the uh, the uh, the lesson to be learned here is that you know sometimes you know your friends can get into trouble. I mean, uh, what happened if it would have been a gun or you know a knife? I would be the one that would get stopped, and that opened my, my eyes and try to pick, you know, uh, pick my friends. So, so this is you know this is good that um, you're taking the road to, to uh, you know graduate uh, you know, high school in a different way or, you know, and, um, and pursue college. Uh, it doesn't matter what college you go to, uh, Harvard or Stanford or you know PCCC. It, it doesn't matter. Again, it goes back to uh, you know, to what your destiny is. Uh, if you see all those kids that you know went to Harvard and Stanford, uh, nice schools or bad schools, uh, you're not. You know, they were born uh, in golden beds. You know, uh, they have rich parents that uh, uh, guide them. Uh, when I was in medical school, uh, by talking to my colleagues, uh, they, they told me that. Uh, they went to SAT uh, prep courses uh, in the summer. So instead of uh, going on vacation, they went on, on a prep course for six weeks to take the exam. Same thing for the for the MCATs. They did prep courses. Uh, the parents paid for it. It was like five thousand bucks or something like that. I, I, I didn't couldn't afford it, so I just you know read books and stuff. But um, you know, just don't don't feel bad that you know, all the other people are. In, Good colleges or have a better life than you. It's just, it just just happens. But you know, you just gotta work harder. Yeah, and that's all. And then your kids will rip that. Um, you know that success uh, because again, my mom she didn't go to school. So now I'm, I'm, I'm a doctor. And I'm a mayor. Now my kids, uh, there's a different story. Now I'm prepping them, uh, helping them with the homework, prepping them for for college. Uh, it's frustrating when. You have homework and you go home and your parents can can help you. Not because not that they don't want to, but because they don't understand. Imagine finishing finishing a sixth grade and you have an algebra problem that you bring from from the school. You know, bring it to your parents and say, "Listen, help me out." They they can't. So a lot of my friends also uh, dropped out because of that reason. They they didn't have the support. I was I was blessed because I, have a, I had a neighbor that helped me out with my homework. I used to come from, from high school, and um, he used to uh, uh, teach me English, and, and, and we 
Google or the map, but um, it's frustrating. So it's, we, we have to uh, go through a lot. Uh, you know, there's a lot of disadvantage that we have that other kids don't, but that makes us stronger. You have to realize yeah. that, that all these uh, challenges just going to make us stronger. And you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I heard it uh, uh, many times from uh, years ago. And I just went in one ear, now the other, but it is true. If you put the time, you surround yourself with good people, you can you can become whatever you want, you can do whatever you want. It's just up to you what you want to do. If you have any questions uh, you want to ask, um, I can answer it. Though. Questions, guys? Any questions? Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm the first Dominican mayor in the United States. So just want to throw it out there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right, Nancy? <laughs> so, um, I have a question. Yeah. So the elections are coming soon, right? Uh, for uh, there's different there's different elections. For, uh, for the mayor, home election. Mayor is 2013. So how's it been like the starting off? So how how have you evolved like since you started? Like you know, it must have been hard you not knowing. So how have you you know in a way growing up to be you know better man and stuff? Like yeah, that? you know, um, the politics politics road um, was a little. It was difficult and it was not on it was not on my um, future plans when I finished medical school. Um, I, I married uh, my wife uh, uh, when I entered medical school. What it was, and you know, we discussed. Oh, you know, I'm gonna be a doctor. She's, she's a teacher. And, you know, we have three boys. And it was more um, of a you know, live happily ever after that type of thing. You know, being a doctor because I'm I'm, I'm a surgeon, uh, foot and ankle surgeon. So uh, the problem that I, I um, encountered was that I love Passaic. I love the population, and I, um, I know that uh, given the opportunity, anybody can, can succeed. And um, that's the difference between someone that makes it and someone that don't, the opportunities that are given, and, and how they address them. So I saw that here in Passaic, there's there was a lot of need. Uh, you know, role models, you know, the kids, they don't, they don't have the opportunities. Um, lost of, of belief in, in the, the youth here, um, and, and I said to myself, you know, um, I, uh, I, I, I gotta, we gotta change this. This cannot go on. A lot of the programs that are there going on in the school systems, a lot of things, they were not tailored for for our needs as immigrants um, coming to this country, because as you know, uh, this country was built by immigrants, they came from Europe, and, you know, all over. Now it's the Hispanics are um, are the uh, predominant um, immigrants here in the U.S. We constitute, I think, it's 52 million um, Hispanics, and that's like 16 percent of the whole population. So before it was the Irish, you know, Russians, uh, Jews. So yeah. now is the is the Latino community, and uh, most of the programs uh, you know are not tailored for us. They're not tailored for for the new generation. Um, and also, uh, you know, the past administration was not doing what I thought was the right thing for the city, you know, redeveloping the city in the right way, things like that. So I said, you know what, um, either we live, uh, live the sake, move out of town, uh, which I have plenty of offers in South Jersey, other, other places, or stay here, you know, in, in the sake and, and, and fight. So I figure, you know, if you're going to make change, um, it's best if you are the owner of a company. Um, becoming the mayor is better because I have more control of things. So I say, you know, let me just go and, and run for mayor. The past mayor, uh, he uh, he went to jail for corruption, so, uh, along with uh, two or three uh, councilmen. So this being a big hit for the city because it was in the dumps. Nobody believed in the city. People from the outside thought that the city was in dumps. So I wanted to change that image and, and create more opportunities for, for you. And actually, you know, that's why you're here in this office, because I believe in you. 
I know that um, if you put an effort and we give you the opportunities, you will become um, different individuals and, and you'll, you'll be productive and, and you'll make your, your family proud and you'll also make your kids, your family, uh, are going to come up. Because remember, you are just a stepping stone. We all hear passing by. Um, you know, you're born, you know, you grow up, and then you die. Then you leave a legacy. Sometimes we forget that. that you know, we think we're going to be young forever and we're not going to die. But technically, we set up the future uh, for, for our kids, for our children, uh, for your children, my children. So it's, it's, uh, it's a double-edged sword because you have to live for yourself and also plan ahead. That's why uh, the green theme, you know, protect the earth, and you know, it's, it's being forgotten. But it's it's, it's so true because um, you know, any little thing that you do, you have to make sure that um, you know you're taking care of the next generation. Make sure you you know discard the plastics and recycle. You know, you don't um, uh, use water properly and things of that nature. Um, but you know, when you're young, you just worry about you know the hair and you know, the suits that you're wearing, you know, the moves and things like that. But um, uh, it, was a, it was a big change for me, uh, and, but I, I, I needed to do it because you have to sacrifice. That's another thing that you have to do. You may have to sacrifice. Somebody has to do the job. Um, sometimes we blame, you know, others, uh, but, you know, it has to start from you. You have to be the one to initiate change, um, and, uh, and people people will, will follow. So that's why I ran for mayor, and um, I, I didn't know much about politics, except that I was in the Board of Ed for about five years, mm -hmm. and I saw uh, how the school system worked, and that's why um, I saw a lot of, a lot of um, you know, uh, problems and, and in inconsistencies that I, I didn't like. So running for mayor, I, you know, I figured, you know what, let me run for mayor and um, try to make a change in the city. And you know, slowly we're you know we're doing it, and in the meantime I didn't know I was going to become the first Dominican mayor in the U.S. You know. But um, you know it happened. Uh, just so you know, sometimes history is written. You know, just by coincidence, not coincidence, but you know you don't even know that you're making history. You know, if you look at the movies, you know, all those heroes that you see, sometimes they don't even know that you know uh, history is being making. And you know, same thing here in this table. You know, maybe you know one of you or many of you make history and you won't really even realize it um, until you know years and years um, maybe a book will be written but um, bottom line is that uh, you know Pasek is a nice city um, it's not the dumps like people say you know we make them actually we make the dumps you know the people that um, live here you know we're the one that, make it, that makes it a dump like for example I see people walking down the street and you know with their kid and, and throwing uh, garbage out of the streets. So what is that child going to learn? So, and if we don't if we don't get involved, then what do you expect? You know, if you see a, a garbage and you don't pick it up, you know, what do you expect? Same thing in your house. If you see garbage and you don't pick it up, what's going to happen? Every day it's going to accumulate, accumulate more garbage is going is going to build. So the same thing, you know, here in the city, we have to take pride uh, in, in it. And uh, make sure that um, you know, going back to, to the politics, that you know you elect people that are going to represent your interests for the board of ed, for the board of ed, and um, for mayor, for city council. So make sure when you hit 18, you register to vote. You know, if you are a U.S. citizen, and if you're not, make sure that you, you try to become a U.S. citizen. So when you start voting. You try try to exercise your vote. Make sure that you. You elect the right people because it's, it's easy to complain. Oh, you know the mayor's not doing anything, or you know this guy's not doing anything, or the congressman. But if you didn't even vote for him, you know why? Why? You know what's? Why are you complaining? You know now if you voted for the guy, you say you know what you didn't. You're not doing your job. You know I voted for you. I thought you were gonna. That's different. And or if you say you know I voted for you, you're not doing your job. I'm gonna vote for, for somebody else. You know that's how the, the power of the vote works. So, um, bottom line is, you know, you have to register a vote or make sure you're getting involved and, and make sure that people that represent our interests are, are in, um, in power. There's important elections um, coming up. Uh, there's local elections 
and there's county elections and, and federal elections. Locally, you know, we have the Board of Education. Those are the guys that control the, the, the educational system here in the city. There's the council, the city council. There's seven of, of, of them. And the mayor. Those are the local elections. And they, uh, the uh, Board of Ed are in April of every year, three run. The council is every four years. Um, well, actually, it's every two years because they, they serve for two. Well, they, they serve for four years, but every two years, three run, three four run. Because every two years, there's a council election. And mayor is every four years. So I run in 2013 to so make sure you register to vote. <laughs> in 2013, and then we have the county elections, and those are the uh, the freeholders. Um, probably heard of the term freeholders. They're like the, uh, the the council members for the county. So Passaic County, Essex County, uh, Mercer County, uh, those things. This is Passaic County, and it's it's composed of 16 seats. So uh, those are the freeholders, and they're usually in November. They run every uh, four years as well, uh, and there's the uh, the federals and, and the districts, which are the assembly and the congress and the senators, and all those guys, which is happening now, November eighth. So if you were ready to vote again, uh, we're Democrats here, so please vote Democrat. Yeah. Vote Democrat. <laughs> now, but uh, I mean, regardless. You know what? What you vote um, here in Passaic, uh, you know we tend to vote Democrat because they represent our interests. Um, it's funny because um, you know when you become a doctor and stuff, you start thinking more like a Republican. So when I was in medical school, they tried to recruit me, and, and I kind of fell for it. Uh, and um, then I realized, you know, what you got because they like to cut, you know, most of the programs that help us out, like you know, college aid. And, you know, things like that. So I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I came from it, and if I didn't have those programs, uh, where where would I be, you know? So um, that's why, we, you know, we're the democratic city here. Uh, but regardless of, you know, your beliefs, uh, make sure you exercise your, your right to vote, you know, Republican, independent. You know. um, as far as you vote, that's, that's what matters. But um, you gotta get involved. That's the main thing is you gotta get involved in, in, in anything in the city. So, uh, so you can you can make it a better city. But just don't lay back and, and let other people do it. Because sometimes, um, by not acting, you know you're already doing harm. You know by not voting, but for somebody that a good person or somebody that's mm -hmm. gonna build a better city, you're already doing harm. So that's something that you have to realize that by not voting or by not doing something good, uh, you let bad people you know, rule or do bad things. Any other questions? Any more questions, guys? Even in Spanish, because many of us are very well Spanish. Yeah. I know you guys. I have a question, yeah. because like, I'm going to get into politics, so. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 I knew it. So, um, like, do you go to, like, study, like, school for that, like, as well? Like, um, for, yeah. Yeah, for, for uh, you can. You can learn, you know, politics, you know, political sciences and, and things. Yeah, but like, uh, I wasn't like, how was like the school like, like, what, like, is it easy? Like, I know it's not easy because everything's not easy, but like, how is it like progress? Like, because I know that's when like patients are just coming, like, kicking in, impatient. Like, I hate that. Like, yeah. yeah well, is really see, you have to, you know, there's like in my case, I, I didn't study it. Um, uh -huh. I just, I just like to help people. You know, that's uh, why I became a doctor. Because mm -hmm. I like to help people. So I figured that, you know, being a mayor, um, I can help more people at mm -hmm. uh, uh, once. Mm -hmm. um, but in politics, you need you need certain things. You know, you need you need to uh, um, uh, be you have to be open minded. Uh, you need to take care of everyone. Everybody's you know the city is is, is your city. So. Um, you gotta make sure that you take care of the seniors, you know, every ethnicity, um, that, you know, all the programs are there, um, and you gotta, you gotta have that desire inside of you, you know. Um, and again, you have to surround yourself with good people, you know, a good business administrator, you know, good supervisors, you know, good directors, um, 
and make sure that every, the city is running properly. Like for example, you know, now with the storms, yeah. my DPW director. Um, even though you know, I don't, I didn't know much about it, yeah. about you know what DPW did and and um, how to clean up the city, but you have an idea. Mm -hmm. You know, so you sit down with the director and you see the need out there. You know, there's branches all over, so it has to be cleaned. So you sit down, sit down with your director. What's your plan? You know, this has to be cleaned and be sensitive to other other people's needs. Um, you know, if you're you know Mexican, you know Dominicans, you know Puerto Ricans. Uh, you know, we all have different different uh, nationalities, but you know, a common a common goal. You know, so you know, bad word for you might not be for me. You know, bad word for me might not be for you. So it's it's a lot of um, you, know, you have to be sensitive. Like you know, today I went to Dunkin' Donuts, right? And um, I um, I order a sandwich for my wife and. Uh, but I was I was so fast, and the lady I think she got a croissant or something, and the lady says, "No, here croissant with you know, cheese," and I, I grabbed it automatically because I usually uh, you know usually we uh, have a habit that oh you know it's probably yours, mm -hmm. but it happened that it was somebody else's, mm -hmm. so I grabbed it, and I said, "You know, wait a minute, it's missing sausage," so but I was walking out, you know, and then this lady opens the door. Um, but I, I, I didn't realize it because my mind was back there thinking, is this my sandwich? Is that, is, you know, this is mine or the guy? So I'm like walking out and the lady opens the door and says, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, then, then it clicked, you know, because she opened the door and I should have said thank you because, you know, she's opening the door for me, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm just spaced out, you know? But um, and just a little you know, thing that you have to understand that, you know, sometimes somebody's rude to you or uh, does something and you think is they're doing it with a bad intention, mm -hmm. but it's because of, you know, situations that, that happen. Yeah. I mean, I usually say thank you, and now this lady probably opened the door, maybe recognizes me, and so probably is going to go and say, oh, you know what, <laughs> I opened the door to the mayor, and he didn't say thank you, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but you see, you got to be sensitive to, you know, people's needs, and and then things that might be happening just because you're in a bad mood or say something bad, is, you know, doesn't mean that uh, people hate you or, or there's something going on, you know, or you're rude. Uh, same thing with the diversity. That's why make what that's what makes diversity nice because you learn from you know all the cultures, um, you learn their their needs, you know, you learn their, their strengths, you know, different dance and things like that. But sex is good. We have Indians, you know. Jewish, Latino, forget it. It was 72 percent Latino now, so the biggest population. In, in, in I think it's in the whole entire U.S. We're the most diverse. I think we're the, the third diverse city in the United States. To say we have a lot of history, but, you know, it's so be it's, it's hidden. Nobody knows about it. That's what, what I'm trying to explode here, because again, to say was being treated like, you know, like nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like exactly. Second plate, then you know, which I'm gonna, I'm trying to change right now, and that's why we're here. Because you need to, uh, you need to hear that and feel proud for for our city, and you know, make it a better place. It's, it's on you, you know. You are the one who's gonna be uh, making this change, and, and your kids. Any other questions? So you know, getting involved in politics is just you know. Your need, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just oh, you know, want to be mayor or you know, you just gotta make sure that you, you know, yeah. to help people. Because bottom line, you, you're a public servant. So once you become a, a, uh, an elected official, you're a public servant. You know, you're serving the public, no matter, yeah. no matter who. You know. A lot of people that come to my office didn't even vote for me. <laughs> they told me I, I didn't vote for you. <laughs> but um, okay. I say okay, you know. But I help them. You know, I have to help them because they're from the same. Yeah. You know. But then after I say after I, I, I help them, say, oh, you know what? You're a good guy. <laughs> I'll vote for you next time. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mayor, um, is there? I mean, are there opportunities for somebody like her that I mean, if she wanted to volunteer on a right. campaign or? I was gonna say that we have a um, soon when I first started. Um, you know, mayor. Again, my, my focus is 
always, you know, the youth and getting people involved in the community. Uh, we uh, started an internship program, which I don't know if um, you were aware of, but um, high school high school students come in here um, and they spend a few few weeks when they have their free time, um, and um, we take them to the whole city hall, different offices. So if you want to start a program, you know, work here, take a look at how we work because um, it's good because you, you get exposure to the real world. Uh, you know, what, how, you know, the real environment, you know, the secretary, the issues, the real issues. And if you go to engineering, you know, you, you see the real issues that, that happen and not just like a, a book, you know. Mm -hmm. So you will get you the experience. Um, mm -hmm. Again, when I was in medical school, I catch up a lot of things because most of them were doctors and lawyers, um, their parents. So what they did was they sent them to, you know, they they uh, they already knew how to do surgeries because they assisted their parents, you know, their uncle and stuff. I didn't even know how the doctor's office looked from the inside. I always was on the outside, you know. But but this these kids they already knew, or they had a friend, you know, that, that was a doctor or a lawyer, and they had the, ex the, the uh, experience, and that's something that our kids like. So I try to create that internship program so you can come in and, and you see, you know, hands on what I, what we do, you know, on a daily day operation. So I, it, it goes a long way. If you want, if you, so anybody that wants to um, uh, do an internship here, uh, you're welcome. You can start off the process. And they can come in. Okay, what does guys? Uh, I'll have another question. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this guy is going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know so far what has been, if there's like a single, what has been your biggest achievements and like your strongest challenges in becoming a man? Like what have you felt like you did that was like you felt gully? Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, the, um, I think, um, the, the budget, you know, the people, don't, you know, people don't pay much much mind to it. But one of our biggest achievements is um, it's working on a, on a uh, budget that um, that doesn't depend on on um, state aid and and, and like um, you know help from from the government. Uh, like for example. Um, the past years, taxes have been going up like 8%. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it. You don't want a house, it's difficult to, to gauge, you know, but if your parents don't own a house, uh, they're probably paying an average of about $10,000 uh, a year for just the house. Um, and then the mortgage on top of that. So they probably pay like $1,000 every month just on taxes. And then the mortgage, another 1000 or another $1,200. So each year, if that if it goes up, you know, eight percent, uh, it, it's an issue because it's going to come a time that you're not going to make, make enough money uh, to pay that, you know, the mortgage. So that's what's been going on in the city. The budget has been uh, has been so uh, flu uh, 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 it hasn't it hasn't been addressed uh, as as to the need uh, versus what can what what can we afford. For example, there was about 230 cops in the city of the same. Uh, and, and, you know, it's nice to have a lot of cops, but you take a lot of burden from, from the, the budget, uh, you know, firemen. And then you have all those, those expenses, but you don't have programs for, for our kids, you know, recreation and things like that. We do, but we don't have that much. Anyway, so what we did was every year the, 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 the state, the government, how to give us money. Uh, gives us like $15 million every year. And then, on top of that, it used to give us like $2 million just because we were distressed. Uh, just because, uh, you know, we needed, a, we needed money to cover for our, for our budget. And on top of that, we had to increase the taxes 8%. So what we did was, we took the save out of that list, distressed city, and tell the, the state, hey, listen, you know, it's nice that you know, you gave us this money, but now we can do it. We can do things on our own. Um, 
So it's kind of like, you know, when you graduate college and you, know, you become a man or a woman and you start paying your rent and you don't need your parents' support, you know, that type of thing. And, and that's, uh, we gain a lot of respect from the governor because that's what he, he that's what he wants. Like Patterson and, you know, Nord, Condon, Trenton, they, they still depend on distress aid. So they kind of distressed city. So they treat them, they pot them, you know, kind of treat them a little different. We took the sake out of that. For 20 years, it's been a distressed city. So now, starting this year, we off. We're not, we're not considered a distressed city anymore. So that's you know, that's one of the biggest achievements that uh, that we've made. But you know, a lot of people don't realize it because it's, it's nothing that is that is. Um, uh, uh, of, of importance unless you you have that problem, you know, with the taxes and stuff. And another thing that's been going on in the city is that it hasn't been developed. Um, as you see, there's a lot of empty lots, like in 8th Street, the big fire back in 84. That's empty there. Um, the uh, big building, 663 Main Avenue, uh, you've probably yeah. seen it. It's been empty for about 25 years. Nobody has done anything. Yeah. Um, panel site that's in Jefferson and, and Hope. That, that in front of the Vigan Cita, you see that the yeah. area there is so all oh, destroyed. Okay. That's a chemical company. And that's been empty for about another 25 years. Um, the buildings here in Passaic and Market, those buildings there, most of them are, are empty too. And they're an eyesore. The old uh, Passaic. Um, Board of Education building that's also um, on the same uh, street to your left if you go this way. Yeah. That, that's always, that's been empty for about another 25 years. So that's going to be another another uh, project that we're developing finally. Mm -hmm. 663, the main avenue building, that was sold uh, a couple of months ago. So it's going to, it's going to be probably, it's going to be ready in about two years. It's going to be um, medical offices. It's going to be a pharmacy in there, a radiology, a small hotel, and a conference uh, conference um, a room. So then that's going to create about 200 jobs. It's going to bring maybe like $200,000 in taxes, you know, revenue to the city. So and, and also it's going to enlighten you know downtown. So that's that's something that you know we're, we're working on. That's done. We're in the process of um, redeveloping Passaic and Market. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the picture. If you go, there's a nice diagram. So the first floor is going to be businesses, and then on top is going to be residential. So we're working on that. As a matter of fact, we had a meeting uh, yesterday with, with the developers that are going to come and, and invest. Uh, in front, uh, the old um, Board of Ed building is going to be knocked down, and it's going to be uh, uh, converted into an arena uh, where um, it's going to for 25,000 people so people can uh, and, and with the little uh, stores around it mm -hmm. so if, if uh, people want to do a rodeo or a concert you know things like that kind of like oh. the, uh, uh, yeah so so uh, it's, that's, that's going to be it's probably going to be done in about two years too that's why I want I want to get reelected in 2013 so <laughs> because most of these things they take time you know this the, what I'm telling you it's been taking me you know years it's me, since I got elected I've been working on this um, and it's like meeting after meeting after meeting and talking to people because I have to sell the city remember it's like you're selling a product people don't want to come to per se and invest they're like oh you know why, why am I going to invest in per se I can go somewhere else and make money so you have to sell to say you can tell them, hey, listen, you know, we're open for business, you know, we're the city, uh, your money's secure here, you know, uh, we have good government, because that's something that developers want, want to hear, there's good government here that we're going to, uh, we're not going to leave them alone and, and uh, lose their, their, their investment. So there's there's a lot of um, a lot of projects coming down. The place in front of um, La Vigencita, um, that it's see the, this last they're not owned by the city they privately own so when they're privately owned it's a little difficult to, uh, to deal with because it's not yours so you kind of have to talk to them 
So I, I, I sat down with all of the owners. It was one of the first things I did. I said, listen, you know, we've got to get this thing moving. They were excited because no other mayor has done that. You know, they, that's why it's been like that for 20 years because there was no communication. They don't care. They're rich people. So mm -hmm. Most of them don't even live in town. They live in New York and, and other, other cities. And, and they don't care. They pay their taxes and um, they have money. Yeah. Some of them uh, were like inherited from, from family, uh, from their parents, and they inherited. So uh, we're working on that. This product, it's going to be a nice complex there, nice shopping complex um, in that area. That's also going to take a, that's going to take a little longer uh, than we expect because it's contaminated. Because there was a, a painting chemical company there. And before it's not like today, they, they didn't care about the environment. So everything is in the ground, it's all contaminated. So now it has to be cleaned. Um, and that takes a lot of money. So in, in maybe th three years, we're gonna see, you're gonna see a nice shopping complex in that area. Um, so that's another thing. You know, and, um, uh, I'm, I'm proud of redevelopment of the city. And, and um, hopefully, you know, uh, get, get more youth involved, you know, like, like you guys. Uh, you tell them. You tell them about the park, the eleven park, and Pulaski Park. Yeah, another, another. Um, that's another thing that we were working on, on rebuilding the parks. Um, we're going to start that. with number eleven school yeah, park. Yeah. We're going to create um, sure. you know, state of the art with a, a um, soccer field there, dome soccer field, uh, astroturf. Everything is going to be astroturf. Uh, the issue that we have there is that it was a lake before. That, that area it was a lake, mm -hmm. and it was turned into to a park. Oh, they put like so yeah. exactly, see the <laughs> drain and all that. Mm -hmm. So now we have to clean all that and then patch it and level it. Mm -hmm. So, see, that's another thing that the past administration they they just patch things. They didn't look into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like what they did was just to get reelected. They just you know fix streets and and, and make things look nice. You know. Uh, so people see that they they uh, doing a, doing a great job and vote for them. I work differently, and I I, I like to think long term. And then why spend money on something that's going to get destroyed, you know, the next year? So they'll fix a park this year, you know, and then the next year they'll fix another park, but then this park will be messed up, you know, the third year. That's what, that's what's happening in Third World Park. Have you seen the drainage? Uh, um, by the uh, playground, the, the kids' playground, that is all rotten and, and falling apart. Well, that, uh, that's what they did. You know, they spent like half a million dollars fixing that drainage, mm -hmm. but they didn't do any study uh, mm -hmm. to see how that's going to hold up. You know, it should have been wider. You know, so they just did it to, to look nice. So yeah, it looked nice, but now, you know, a couple of years later, you're going to have to spend more money. So uh, we're going to fix number 11 school park, uh, Pulaski Park also. We're going to do a nice soccer field there where it is uh, just old, old dirt. Um, the, uh, we're, we're about to start on Pulaski Park um, a couple of months ago. But because of the flood, uh, now it changed everything because uh, they have to do some uh, inner uh, ground working so the water doesn't, doesn't uh, get stuck that much. So now it's back in the drawing boards. But in a couple of years as well, you're going to see, you know, the brand new parks. So that's something. Thank you, Nancy, for bringing that up. And the Bobolini Stadium, too. Huh? The Bobolini. Oh, the, uh, the stadium. Bobolini Stadium, with oh, the high school stadium. Uh, hasn't been uh, rebuilt for a long time, except the grass that was fixed a couple of years ago. The track, the soccer track. Yeah. The uh, uh, running. So uh, again, that's going to be rebuilt in, uh, probably next year. Everything is going to be rebuilt. It's going to be astroturf, lights, the bleachers. Uh, so um, that's going to be that's going to be exciting because it uh, hasn't been done like in 20, 30 years. So that's another thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, did I miss something? <laughs> 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 so much. That, you know. Yeah. I have a question. Though. Like, do you know how like you have so many goals set for the? But like, what are you like trying to do with like the youth? Because I mean, you say it's all the youth that has to do like something bigger though. Because most of them are not really interested anymore because of what per se seems like. So I want to know like how you're trying to get like the youth attention so they can activate more and be more active than to like per se and everything like. 
Well, uh, like you know, this is a perfect example. I mean, pretty sure that you never went, you never came to a mayor's office, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. You know, <laughs> uh, the mayor was, you know, was. Oh, let me enter, enter roads. He gonna get married. I said, why you don't marry for say? You can marry here. Come on, think about it. You know. Uh, see the the youth. Um, you gotta you you have to um, you have to be visible and, and, and tell them that you know you, that they can do. It. Mm -hmm. You know they feel supported. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm working close in, in hand with the board of ed to make sure that those supporting programs are there, you know, for the kids, uh, tutoring programs and after school things mm -hmm. for them. Um, uh, it's, you know, some, some make a mistake and, you know, they're pregnant or whatever, you know, make sure that there's the support. Because I, I want everybody to graduate high school. You know, that's my goal, at least to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. And then there's those that, um, you know, want to go to college, you know, good for them, you know, applaud them, nice. There's other that don't, and that you know they're not caught up to be to go to college. For example, I I, uh, I have a brother and a sister. Uh, my sister's older, and, and uh, my uh, brother's younger. Um, they didn't go to college. Um, my sister just couldn't because she had to support. She came with my mother and kind of had to support the family, so she couldn't go to college. But she has a nice job. You know, she did a billing medical billing training. She's doing okay. My little brother, on the other hand, he didn't feel like he didn't want to go to school too. So <clears throat> I think he, he did also a training, uh, mechanic training. So he's working somewhere, making good money, probably making more money than me. Mm -hmm. And went to college and you know became a doctor. Nowadays, if you have a technical job, you make more money than, than go to school uh, for for a doctor. By the way, uh, you know if you go to once you finish. Um, College, you, know, you get financial aid if you if you're legible. But once you finish college and you go to uh, do your master's or your doctorate in education or whatever, doctorate, uh, lawyer, uh, there's no financial aid, so you don't have to take loans, you know, student loans. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why you know Obama addressed that a couple of uh, weeks ago, because like myself, I owed $150,000 in loans. Because medical schools to tuition is about twenty five thousand per year per year, and then living expenses. So that's add up to you know, quite quite a chunk. Uh, and the interest, the interest kills you. So now Obama is addressing that the interest is the lower, and you can consolidate all your loans. So um, many of my friends didn't go to college some because of that. They could, they couldn't afford it, but they didn't want to take loans. So you know. You just so you know, I mean, you know, if you can take loans and you gotta go, um, you know, all the means, you gotta get all the means possible you know, to pursue an education. Because right now, yes, I'm a doctor and I gotta pay this, you know, the, the loans, but you know, it, it was worth it. You know, it opens the door for me to many other things. As a matter of fact, you know, being a doctor helped me become a mayor because, you know, people, the residents were looking for something different. They were not looking for the typical politician. They were looking for somebody who would come in with a different point of view, which I did. The people that were running against me, they were seasoned politicians. They were councilmen, and they were involved in, in the city for 20 years. So they, people felt that it was going to be the same old. You know, they, they wanted a change, and that's what they got with me. And they, they got a change because I, I, I worked totally different. So. Um, the the uh, you know the student loans uh, they're they're gonna be there for you uh, and take advantage you know if you can because um, th there's no reason why you shouldn't you know pursue the, either a technical uh, school or career or, or college and again you know nobody uh, is better than, than anybody here my little brother he didn't go to college and you know he's not less of a brother to me he just you know, it's just uh, something different. And besides, you know, I have a problem. I called him, you know, in my house. I'm like, listen, you know, I have a problem. My plumbing broke, and they paid me. Yeah, they get paid with money, those plumbers. So, um, so you, so the thing is, given given the youth, you know, the, the opportunities that um, that all the opportunities out there, so you can make it. You know, um, 
the other the other important issue uh, here is again, um, I, I grew up here in Passaic, and we have different needs than Montclair, you know, uh, the, you know, Lawrence, and other other cities all over the the, the country. I mean, here in Passaic, we, we we have different needs. Like I told you, uh, our parents are not rich. I, mean, I don't know whose parents are rich here. Raise your hands. If, you know, or graduated, you know, high school. I mean, my my parents didn't graduate high school. Again, my mom finished a sixth grade education. That's not the case in Montclair and other towns. You know, they wish their parents are doctors, and lawyers. And they have a career, you know, engineers. You know, they have a nice job, you know, Johnson Johnson or whatever. Um, so we we have to address the youth differently here and then create those opportunities. And that's what. You know, people that live in other cities don't understand that we have different needs here in the city of the city. And that's, that's why the governor, um, he's addressing, he's trying to fix a problem, but um, try, trying to treat the cities equally. Like, for example, he cut um, overboard, he cut the budget. So instead of giving us 15 million, he's giving us 13 million now. So we lost actually, actually 12, 12 million. So we lost 3 million now. And those three million dollars was devastating for us. For other cities, it might not, but for us, it was, you know, devastating because we we need it. You know, we need that money for more programs. You know, I mean, babysitting programs or um, you know tutoring you know, programs and things like that that other towns don't need because they go home and you know the mom is there that doesn't probably work. You know, already help them with the homework, with, with with things, or they can afford paying a tutor. Or you know things like that. So that's what I'm trying to do with the youth: give them exposure to opening up city hall, give give them exposure to you know what what we have here, and um, make make you you know believe in yourselves. La otra cosa, la otra cosa estamos teniendo ahora es mini concierto en la high school. En septiembre traemos a Lenia más de aventura, y este viernes vamos a tener 24 horas. Eso es para que los hombres los jóvenes pase también disfruten de buena música. O sea, tú sabes que los adultos van a la discoteca, bueno, los jóvenes lo pueden ver <laughs> en vivo en la high school. ¿Cuándo es eso? El viernes, 24 horas. Yeah, that was another, another thing that, that we, we brought. Free calls, a free call. Free calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's, you know, the, the guys from Aventura came in. You know, Romeo didn't come in, but, you know, <laughs> Lenny and Max came in. <laughs> uh, and they're good guys, you know, they're, they came in and, Again, we know we call them and say, hey, listen, you know, when it comes to, they probably didn't even know what the save was, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was poor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, I, we, I call them and say, hey, listen, you know, come to the save, you know, talk to our kids. Um, and they were shocked. They were like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, the kids, you know, they want to they wanna hear your stories and, and see what, you know, how you make it. And, and so they came. They came in uh, a couple of months ago. September 19, it was here. Yeah. And three songs, and they talk to the kid in the high school. Sure, and now Friday, we got 24 hours. Is this Friday? When is it? This Friday. This Friday. Yeah, they're going to sing. 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 Friday. Yeah, because you know okay, <laughs> that's 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 what happens. You know, other other cities, you know, they do it. Why why can't we? Yeah. And it's free for the um, for the pay tax. They just come do it for free. And put a DJ, we put a DJ and the yeah, yeah. and we gotta bring more people. How we can? You gotta do that too. We have to do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna bring Manudo, but. <laughs> That's how old I am, right? Yeah. <laughs> Might be hard to get him to hold of Ricky yeah. Martin right now. <laughs> Probably Ricky. You can get Ricky. Ricky Martin. Um, any other questions? Any, anything? Uh, that was very nice, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. Yeah, we know how busy you are at this time because it's, you know, because of the storm on Saturday. Yeah. So we thank you so much because I know you've been uh, getting a lot of phone calls lately. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of people. How you making out with that? Power, yes. power and branches. Branches, uh, branches fell on the cars. Mm -hmm. Have a, a, a guy that's texting me saying, you know, I know 
he has no power and the bait. And this, and I, it's like I'm calling the PSC and G, that they tell me that they're gonna fix it. And first thing in the morning, then it comes in, they're not fixed. And, they come in and complain to me. You told me. Uh, so I got to copy his Yeah. Is the center from um, here closed? <coughs> um, yeah. See the, the thing. What um, uh, Red Cross did? They opened a, a, a big um, uh, center you know, for me in Hackensack. They come in and you know pick. Um, you know, pick the, the people up and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that uh, people don't understand that um, this is not like the storm in which your house got flooded, and, you know, there was a hell pass. Or, um, just because, you know, there's no power unless, you know, an elderly or, yeah. you know, the kids. It's not, an, it's not an emergency, per se. I mean, you have food in the fridge, so it's not like your food got rotten or or water came in and damaged, you know, your fridge that like happened to storm. So some people try to take advantage of that. And, you know, they want to come in and, and get, you know, a shopping cart you know, full of food and things, and I got to explain them. And, you know, this, this is not like the storm. You know, it's a little different unless you have a, an elderly person you know, or a child, and, um, and also the temperature. It's cold, but according to the Red Cross, it has to be below a certain temperature, so it becomes like a real you know, emergency. Um, but uh, but you know, it's still you know, it's difficult because you're disrupting your you know your, your quality of life. You, know, you don't you, know, you want to have you know certain things. You know, you wake up, you want to have electricity, and your water running, and once that that, that doesn't happen, there's you know there's problems. So. And then you think that that's the end of the world because it's happening to you and you don't see your neighbor. That's going probably you know, the worst. But you have to treat them individually. You know? okay. Okay. Thank you for all your help and for the, uh, yeah. for the, uh, the enlightenment that you uh, gave today. Thank you so much. Because we have to come back another day, right, guys? Are you uh, willing to come back? So <laughs> and if you want to do the, uh, you know, internship, yes, you yes. can start it you know, right away, so you can come in. We need to clean the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the windows. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, that's funny because um, my father in the Dominican Republic, he used to have a, uh, he used to have a motorcycle dealership, which he started when he was like. 20 or something. He worked real hard for it. He was he was a mechanic, according to you know. My mom told me he started off um, fixing bicycles you know, in the backyard, and then um, motorcycles came in, and he learned how to fix motorcycles. And then um, he went to the capital and learned. He did a training course <coughs> in Honda. You probably heard of that brand Honda. So they teach him like how to fix motorcycles, like real good. And, and then after that, he was so yeah. good that he opened up a dealership, a, a motorcycle yeah. dealership. So it was the first one like in my town memory. And um, he had a motorcycle dealership used in the new, and he also sold parts. And a uh, mechanic shop, you know, the sign, you know, right there. So, you know, I, I go, he, he took me there, because my mom did divorce when I was like two. But he used to come and visit me bring me some eggs, which you see the equivalent of an Xbox now, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, parents, they used to bring, you know, they used to bring them, like, you know, uh, the chicken or, you know, uh, a little goat or chivito or something uh, back then, and in DR. So anyway, so I, I, I go and visit him, and I see, you know, him, you know, with the nice motorcycles, you know, new, and they look so nice, and the guy selling the parts, and I'm like, oh, dad, you know, I want to come and work for you, you know? I think it was like 10 or something. Like he goes, oh, you want to you come work? I'm like, he goes, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to come work with you. Oh, yeah, sure, come by, come by tomorrow. I'm like, oh, I'm all excited, you know, come out of the school, you know, go to my father. And he goes, uh, you ready? I'm like, yeah, I'm all just stuff, you know? He goes, come on. 
he took me back to the mechanic shop with all the guys all greasy, you know, fixing the, the motorcycles and the smelly. And I'm like, uh, yeah, dad, oh, you're gonna start here. Come on, get dirty, take your shirt off. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. I thought I was gonna be selling, you know, the parts and all that. <laughs> so, you know, I had to stay there for months, you know, with those guys. I had a blast with them because they were so funny. Got dirty and, you know, learned how to piston works and how the engine works. And so then my pals come back and a couple of months later said, come on, let's go. So then he took me to, to sell, to sell the, the parts. And I'm like, damn, Dad, thanks, man. Appreciate it. You know, now I'm all dirty and I thought you were going to put me, because yeah, but at least now you know what you're selling, which is true. You know, I mean, they will, they will ask, him, ask me for a piston. I'm like, I didn't even know what the hell a piston was. But now since I worked in the mechanic shop, I knew that it was the, you know, the piece that was going to go up and down and move the, the motorcycle. So, and he didn't go to school for it, too. So he finished like a first grade from what I heard my mom had to teach him right or something. So see that tells you that, you know, you know, school is one part, but what you have inside of you, the desire to to do something, uh, that's what matters, the, that drive. What time are you from in New York? La Vega. Yeah, La Vega. Come on this town. But I hope you enjoy it. You know, next time I hope in bananas too. Thank you so much. Right, thank thank you. You. Before you go, can we uh, go out, gather and take a picture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind. Yeah, please let's go gather. Yeah. 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 Yeah.